Okay, the seeds have been sitting long enough that, and the fermentation has gone long enough that whatever is going to come off is going to come off. There are probably a few little residual ones. But uh, we're going to sh uh, stir them up a little bit more, try to knock off the seeds. And then we're going to show you the process of how to separate the pulp and the residue from the seeds of just a clean batch of seed left. It's just basically just uh, rinsing it and a number of times to get all the pulp out just keep going back and forth. Um, once again the, the idea for doing this is it'll help give the seeds actually a uh, little healthier uh, start in life. They can make them uh, more viable. Uh, the fermentation itself uh, process actually kills some, some bacteria and it also helps dissolve that uh, little slime coat that's over top of the seed which makes them uh, germinate a little easier and it gets rid of the surfaces where seedborne diseases will attach to them. We'll also a little bit later here we're going to take and do a um, process of treating them with uh, some chlorine bleach. So now it's just a matter of uh, getting the pulp out and it's a little faster to take and pour it out. You could just let it just run, you know, your water run into the jar, but it's, it takes a very, very long time. By doing this, you can reduce most of it out pretty quick and you can go back and forth and just do it a lot. It takes about uh, six or seven times of going through this to get it all out. Um, you're not, you don't want to be too concerned about uh, letting some of the seeds get out because the, the bad ones are going to be your floaters, they're going to float to the top or you might have seeds that have, uh, if you left your fermentation too long uh, there could be some uh, little seeds that have started to, to actually sprout this little uh, tap root that comes out uh, takes some, a lot of the energy away from the seed and it's not going to be any good anymore once it dries the second time you pretty much killed that seed and it also makes them float to the top so all the floaters you want to get out so uh, you don't have to wait till everything settles completely 100% out but you do want to let it sit uh, just a little bit let the, the bigger ones go down and also if the agitation and the aeration of the of the uh, water sometimes little bubbles will be on some good seeds and so you will give it just a second for that to break loose and then pour, pour off and try to pour it fast and let all the rest of the um, you know, pulp and debris and stuff come out. And if you look here, you're going to see there's a few seeds that actually did start to sprout. See the little uh, tails on them. Okay. You can mix it up about um, a quart of uh, tap water warm, not cold, not hot, um, Clorox in about a quart. Use about a teaspoon to a quart of water. Um, and it's easy to use the sieve to rinse the seeds in and then to uh, do this process here first before we rinse it. Let this sit for about five minutes. I just like to stir them up a little bit and let it sit for about five minutes, maybe ten minutes even, depending on the seed. And then you want to rinse it for about ten 10 minutes in the cold water. Um, seems 10 minutes seems like a long time, but you want to make sure you get all that chlorine off because if you leave it on too long, or if you use a TSP method, which is basically done the same way, you dissolve the TSP in the water, it will actually uh, deteriorate the seed and can kill the, kill the germination seed of the seed too. So it's important to uh, make sure you rinse all that chlorine off. And this we're using pretty cold water on this. And you can tell when the chlorine's out, you can lift it up and you sniff it a little bit and you'll see if it still has a chlorine smell to it, then you still gotta go a little bit longer. But once that chlorine smell is gone, you're good to go. You can finish the drying process. And we'll show you here in just a minute uh, how to get most of the water off the seeds. So you want it to dry pretty fast. You don't want it to uh, stay in a big clump and stay wet because then you'll start having that germination problem again where they'll have a lot of seeds that start sprouting.
Okay, we just about got this done now. <clears throat> a little bit more just to ensure it's gone. And what we're going to do next is to take the water out. And it works real easy, just let gravity do its thing. We're just plopping this uh, sieve, you see on the edge of the sink, and uh, the force keeps it going. The water goes out. You can do this for a few times, you know, it's about a minute's worth. It gets most of all that water out. Take a little rag and wipe off that rest. Sometimes you can uh, bounce it up on the rag and it'll get rid of it too. Now we're going to dry the seeds. Um, it's important, especially when you have, uh, you know, two or three dozen different types of seeds sitting around. You want to mark your, on a piece of paper what, what it is, where you're drying them. Because you're not going to remember what they are, I assure you that. You, you might remember, I think, we, what they look like, but it's going to happen that you'll forget, and then you wonder what in the world is a big batch of seeds. So we're going to take it and spread it out on. Uh, I got three sheets of uh, uh, paper towels, and I set the paper towels over top of a dehydrating tray. And what that does is lets the air get to the top and the bottom. Let this sit for about uh, a week or two, depends on the humidity. I have a fan, overhead fan, uh, in the same room, which keeps the air circulating, which makes them dry a little faster. They should be dry to touch by the very next day, and then you want to let them dry out pretty good until uh, about, uh, even maybe two weeks before you bag them up. If you put them in a plastic bag too soon, they'll sprout on you. 